channel. Right here behind me, I got an EG Civic, a 95, a K24 Z7 swap out of a 9th Gen SI. Um, I've had a lot of requests for information on this car. Uh, it's been swapped probably two or three years uh, now. Um, still needs a little bit of work in tune, cleaned up some wiring and stuff of that nature, but the swap is done and is running. So I've got a lot of questions about, uh, you know, technicalities as far as the swap, and a lot of people are confused. Um, especially with as far as the uh, wiring aspects and computer and stuff of that nature. So I uh, finally decided to make a video to try and answer all those questions um, and be a, pretty much a full how-to on the, uh, the whole swap and the process, the car shoes and everything of that nature. So unfortunately the swap's already done, the car's running and everything. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a few videos. It's probably going to, I get kind of long-winded and we'll try and make this as technical as possible. So. Uh, it might span a few videos here, but I'm going to try my best to capture, get all the information I can, you know, uh, on video for you guys. And if you have, if there's anything further that I didn't cover, if you got any additional questions, ask and I'll, I'll uh, try to respond or make an additional video. Um, so just stick with me here. I'm going to try and uh, break it down to sections um, as far as what I cover. I'm also going to be talking about some of the differences for the people that may not know. Uh, some of the differences as far as the Z7 swap and the standard K-series engine. I've got a K20A2 sitting around here I can use for uh, display and comparative purposes. So just stay with me here um, and I'll try and pretty much cover the, uh, get as much information as possible on it. Thanks. Okay guys, so I did the K20A2 out of the back of the garage. As you can see, my garage is very full. I'm in the process of uh, remodeling my house, so a lot of the things are supposed to be inside the house are out here. So I've got a lack of a garage. Anyway, so this is the K20A2 right here. I'm going to be showing you the differences. I'm going to just uh, be going from one engine to the next, just showing you some of the uh, main differences here and uh, try to answer any questions regarding that. Um, all right, let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, a K20A2 has uh, just a standard four-port individual runner uh, cylinder head as far as the exhaust goes. Um, now that's one of the main differences that people, uh, one of the first things they see on the Z7 motor is that the exhaust, the cylinder head actually has a single port exhaust manifold, <clears throat> as you can see here. So it's just the uh, exhaust merges in the head, collects in the head itself and just expels through a, a single port here. Now it's actually very common, um, a lot of the modern vehicles today are going to this style uh, exhaust, I don't know why, I don't know if it's uh, their flow characteristics are just cheaper to make it's probably going to be the difference but um anyway i mean the main thing here is a lot of people get intimidated by this swap because you can't just buy an off-the-shelf exhaust manifold to make it work but that's not really an issue i just made this here out of uh, some stainless um, these are all pre-made pipes from um bear with me here vibrant pre-made pipes from vibrant and i just added a bung for my wideband o2 uh, I just made this flange out of a piece of quarter inch stainless, welded it all together. The uh, open exhaust out of the hood is pretty obnoxious and kind of loud, but my plan with the car is to turbo it, and I've actually got some of the parts I'll show you later. But uh, So I didn't want to go through the process of making a full exhaust for the car, just to throw it away later. So this is just something quick I made, and um, when I plan to turbo it, I plan to run it out of the hood anyway, so uh, once I get to that step, I'll you know be redoing it anyway. Okay, so back to the uh, back to the A2. Let's check out the intake side of it. Okay, now as you can see on the intake side, everything's standard here. Just a standard four-port intake. Um, really nothing uh, nothing fancy here. Now on the Z series, the difference on the Z series is they actually have a plastic intake manifold, but they have a aluminum flange here that bolts to the head first, and then the plastic intake bolts intake bolts to that. I don't have that piece. Uh, my engine didn't even come with a plastic intake manifold my Z series. So um, I wouldn't probably wouldn't even advise using that anyway. What I ended up doing was I got this skunk too. I think it's uh, pretty com pretty uh, comparable to an RBC. I just got this really cheap. I think I paid like 150 bucks for it. So I slapped it on because I needed one. But I mean it's basically direct bolt on. Once you do away with that flange I was telling you about, it'll bolt on straight to a uh, to the Z series engine. Um, the only difference is, I want to say the water port right here in the intake man intake manifold 
is shaped different. I think I had to go in there, I had to use the gasket as a reference, and I marked it and I went in there and uh, with a Dremel and just kind of widened the hole out a little bit. And other than that, it was good. Um, hadn't had any leaks or anything of that nature, so that's good. And then on top of that, I was just able to uh, use a standard K-series uh, throttle body here. Um, let's see, I hadn't got everything hooked up. I deleted the IEC and some of the other stuff on it. going to come back later on and clean up all these wires. My Z-Series engine actually come with the drive-by wire throttle body. And I'm not, I'm not using the factory Z-Series ECU wiring harness or anything of that nature. I'd have to use the uh, factory throttle body, the pedal out of the donor car everything of that nature. I didn't have a donor car, so that's why I went this route. And I'll get into the electronic side of it later. But, so if you're doing the swap my way, you can just use standard uh, throttle body, um, standard cable, standard everything, really. All right, now let's get to use, uh, some of the other differences on the engine. Okay, physically, everything's gonna be just about the same as far as the dimensions and everything. Um, on the two engines here, I'm just gonna give you a quick run around. Okay. Another main difference people point out, and I think that some people think it's an issue, but it's really not, is that the uh, oil filter location is different with two engines. I'll show you. On the standard K series, K20, the oil filter is at the back of the block right here. On the Z series, it's actually right above the oil pan right here. And some people think that's going to cause an issue, and it really doesn't. Um, because you still have plenty of clearance for your half shaft that comes through here and it actually uh, is better because it really makes it more serviceable putting the uh, oil filter down here and I'm sure that's why uh, Honda done this designed this way because you know if you're like me from here got a lot of experience with the old D series and stuff like that the oil filter will be on the back is really a pain so putting it down lower is uh, a lot more serviceable and I actually like it a lot better let's check out the oil filter on the Z series Okay. okay, as you can see, way down here, right below the half shaft, is where the oil filter comes out. Like I said, I like it a lot better like that. There's no clearance issues or anything of that nature, so it works out really good. Okay, another difference. Um, it's not really a difference. The core packs, you want to use, uh, I'm using a K20A2 wiring harness. This is the engine harness out of RSXS, so I'm using, you can use uh, the standard R6S coil packs and they plug right in. I originally tried to use Z-Series coil packs and uh, the plugs were different. I didn't feel like wiring in uh, new pigtails or trying to locate them. I really I tried to find some I couldn't find any so I ended up just uh, swapping the standard A2 coils and they're really cheap so that's not really an issue. Okay, um, another big concern on people with doing this swap is the crank sensor. And yes, there is a difference on the crank sensor. So let's get into that. <clears throat> okay, this is a K20A2. i try and get the light here. Let's see it a little better. So this is the crank sensor location on the A2. It's right here. The sensor actually reads off of the front of the crank, right below the harmonic, right behind the harmonic balancer. Um, the difference is on the Z series. <clears throat> crank sensor is located back here and it reads off the back side of the crank. The issue with that is the location is not really the issue the issue because you know it wouldn't be nothing but extending wires or something if that was the issue but the issue is that the crank trigger on the front and of the A2 and the one that comes on the back of the Z7 has a different teeth count so that runs into um, your crank sensor issues at the ECU so that's probably the biggest um, biggest hurdle, really. Not really even a hurdle, I was just trying to figure it out. But uh, I'm going to get into that later because I did address that and create that issue. Um, but I want, let me show you uh, the location of the crank sensor on the Z7 engine. Okay, on the Z series, it's going to be way down here. You can see the blue, uh, the blue clip down there. That's where it is. Um, again, not really an issue, we'll tackle that when I get to that part. So Okay, so like I said, it's been a long time since I've done this swap, so I'm trying to go over a lot of things from memory. But uh, that's gonna be your main differences between the two engines. Uh, 
other than that, physically, they are pretty much identical. Um, you know, you can use the whole fuel setup, standard K-series stuff. Um, not too much more than that. So, now that I've addressed the differences, um, the next stage of this is going to be talking about the just the physical things as far as getting the engine into the car um, and what kind of parts you can use and the things you have to do to make that happen. Okay guys, so that's pretty much going to do it for the first part of the video. Um, I've tried to uh, not make it too long and drawn out and boring, so I'm going to split it up into another section. So just stick with me here and we'll get back into it. And uh, again, if I miss anything, just ask me questions. I'll get back to you or I'll make another video. Um, so yeah, check out the next video and we'll see you there.